Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the monthly wrap-up with myself, Michael Noss, from Stats Ed Trading. Once a month, we zoom way out and we look at monthly charts, try to figure out what's happening this month in the individual markets, the FX, crypto, and overall stock market, some names that I'm interested in watching going into next month or next year in this case, try to figure out kind of where we settled the year at, what we can maybe expect to next year. This will be a longer video. Make sure you don't miss a video by going to statsatrain.com. Sign up for the email list there. Without further ado, let's get into some charts. I hope everyone has their beverage ready. I have a little cider right here just because I know this will be a little bit of a long one. Starting as always with Bitcoin. Not much to say from the monthly standpoint, but we are just up another month in Bitcoin. Continues now four months up in a row, nonstop. It's been a great little trade after this breakout. I've been long, again, for a long time here in Bitcoin, looking for some sign or some signal to get me out. Even if we go in on a shorter term time frame, maybe below this base would be an interesting way to get out or, or above this base is where I'm looking to maybe add back in. But if we look from this monthly chart, now that we are above these lows right here, really not much until, say, 49,000 and then all-time highs. So we're just in this little bit of no-man land between this high and this low. But, you know, the trend is strong. We have to stick with that trend as long as that trend persists. Ethereum, this one's been the laggard like four months in a row up technically, but not doing nearly as well as Bitcoin. But we are breaking out here uh, on the monthly chart. This is the first monthly close above these levels right here, above really this high. Let's zoom in. Above this high right here. It's the first time we've had this monthly close above there. So that's going to obviously be a strong thing. And everything in the crypto space is looking positive for now. Yeah, if anyone's traded crypto for any length of time, you'll know it looks great until the very moment it doesn't. And then hopefully you had some stops in places. Uh, taking a look at the dollar index. So this is the dollar versus a whole bunch of other currencies. Big level here at call it 101, where it's been bouncing off of this level a few times, a big area of support right here. The question is, do we break through this right away? Do we do a little a little bounce and then a breakdown? Do we do a little you know a little bounce like that and then we fade, or right, do we just bounce from here forever? I don't know. I would be shocked at the amount of times we've tested this support zone that we don't at least break through it and and trade under it for a little bit. So maybe a little bit of a bounce and then a retest. Maybe that's what we watch for in that market. Uh, Aussie N again. This is an interest rate pair that I watch a lot. It keeps rejecting this high right here but then not following through so it could just turn into a giant ascending triangle here on Oz Yen which if this leads to a breakout this pair can actually trend you see some trends here if we go into some prior years we have some trends here as well so we might want to take a look to play against these now going into we're going to take some time we're going to go into the individual components of that dxy so there's some euro this is looking pretty much the same where we are now into an area of resistance right here are we going to bounce are we going to bleed right through I'm not too sure we look at pound dollar also known as cables the kids call it same thing area of resistance right here that we're dealing with we bounced from the anchored view app from this low, made a higher low. Question is, do we continue to push up and test this prior high right here? Again, some relative weakness when it comes to the pound. Let's look at US dollar CAD. In US dollar CAD, we're at support as well. So this is really what I wanted to point out. We have US dollar yen, right? A lot of these currencies, except the yen, seem to be at this major, uh, major support zone. So the yen... We had a little bit of a fake breakout above this level, and then we failed, and this is a pretty ugly month here on the yen. So I'm going to be watching dollar yen going forward for any kind of a bounce that I can fade on a shorter term time frame, uh, just because it looks like this double top may be in play, which would mean, you know, we're we're going to target way down here. So it could be a nice move down in the yen. I'm going to keep an eye on. We got to remember, we're zoomed way, way out here. Uh, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar has been really weak when we compare this to 
all of the other uh, currencies we've been looking at. Very weak, very slow to get going in Aussie dollar. I think this is probably has a lot to do with uh, oil and gas. Uh, but if I'm going to be buying the dollar against another currency, I'm probably going to do it by shorting Aussie dollar just because it's been the weakest of the pairs. Last but not least, gold. Right? Highest monthly close again. So last month was the highest monthly close in gold. And we have another highest monthly close ever in gold here as well. So continues to break out. If, if we look on the daily chart, continues to be choppy the way it broke out. We had this rejection candle that led to quite a sell. Uh, but now we've kind of come back up and it looks like we might be trying to retake that wick. But gold is looking really, really well here. Now let's get into the overall stock markets. So we're going to start here with the S&P 500. And we have, let's go out to our monthly chart. We actually just click this button here. And this switches our picture and picture chart. So this one will be a daily chart. This is a monthly chart. Monthly all-time closing high, I would say. High of 47.9. No, that's the high. So what's the close? Sorry. The close is 47.5. So yeah, barely all-time monthly closing high in the S&P 500. So not bearish, right? <laughs> Definitely not bearish for an all-time monthly closing high. I know a lot of us are saying, hey, this is why I love this zoom out. People are saying overextended, 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 overextended. But we're only up two months in a row. So, you know, you see in this area, we can be up five, six, seven months in this area right here, we can be up 10 months in a row. Can happen. It's not very common, but it can happen. So being up two months in a row, for me, isn't the moment where I should be calling the top of everything out there. Let's go down, down the cap scale as we normally do. So we're going from the large caps to the MDY, which is our mid caps. Nice breakout, not all time highs, but a nice breakout of this level right here in the mid caps, the two to 10 billion club. And then let's go to the small caps with the IWM and also a nice solid breakout. I love to see these candle closes. Uh, Charles Dow, one of the creators of technical analysis as a whole, taught us that the closing candle is the most important one. Seeing these monthly closing highs breaking into these bases to, to me is amazing. Uh, TLT, bonds. So bonds are still coming up and we're still battling. We're through, technically through, but we're still battling this low right here. And then we have this high above and we have some lows back here. So bonds to me are, are a little bit iffy. Now, you got to look at bonds as the inverse of rates, right? If, if bonds move higher, that means rates are moving lower, which is probably good for the stock market considering what we're looking at here in the overall rates department. So I don't think it's bad that this disconnection between stocks and bonds could happen. We could have bonds move higher and stocks also move higher. Absolutely. Uh, bonds definitely fell a whole bunch, right, to, to bounce through there. So we have to just be mindful of that. XME, metals and mining, we know this one looks great breaking out of this base and out of this ascending triangle or this symmetrical triangle. If you go to last month's monthly wrap up, I actually talked about this ascending triangle. We had metals of mining just skyrocket. So a lot of this has to do with the steel news and all of that. But it's interesting that last month, this coil that looked very bullish preceded all of this news. So just by Again, using these long term technicals to guide our decision, that makes a lot of sense. And we're going to go into oil here. And oil's been the dog. Energy's been the dog. If we go XLE, energy has been the dog where everything else is breaking up. However, we have this area of about 80 bucks, which was interesting back here, interesting right here. And we're getting to that now. And I, I just have a feeling that in bull markets, you see a lot of rotation, right? You see a lot of uh, you know, this stock rotating into this sector, into this sector, where the sector that was strong before isn't strong now. This rotation continues to happen. So if that's going to occur, then I'm kind of eyeing energy to be the next leg higher and the next thing that pushes higher. So between that and USO, again, next year, I'm obviously going to have my eye uh, on energy. So let's take a look. Let's go back into our daily chart. And let's take a look at some names that I found that I'm going to take a look at going into this year. This one, TGTX, very interesting. 
26% short float. I love high short floats on names that look like this on the daily chart. I don't like high short floats on names that look like this on the daily chart. They're just selling off dramatically. But this has gone from 7 to 17, so we have over double. This is one of my favorite setups. Find me a stock that has doubled off its lows with a, a very large short float and then some sort of tight base after that to play off of. This one's getting really tight in through here. So if we start to break up here, the idea is that you know, one fifth of these shares are lent out short. So we could get a pretty solid move in this TGTX again after this move right here. And we continue to play these. Uh, I remember I actually took a trade on this guy right here on this breakout earlier. We continue to play these until the moment that they break and then we move on with our lives after that. GIII, no idea what this one is, but same type of deal. We have gone from a low of kind of 13 up to 33. So there's our double off the lows and a double off the lows, tight consolidation, 10% short float, not as crazy, but still very interesting here. Uh, Snap, this one's not really a um, shy short float name. It's only 7% short float, but that's quite a bit for some of these. And we have almost our double off the lows. Uh, with the lows here, we're probably seven, eight bucks. We're up to 16. And then this tight consolidation. So again, this is a pattern that I love and I, I look for going forward. Um, one name this must have triggered in the after hours because I want to keep that on watch. RMBL, not quite a double. We've gone from five-ish up to eight or nine, but that's fine. Big push off the lows, another 20% short float on this rumble. We're above... These prior highs right here broke out. Now we're retesting them. Looks like we could be coiling higher. So I'm watching that one as well. So there's a couple names I'm interested in. Those are the monthly charts that we're watching for this week. I appreciate everyone who's come by and watched a video or made a comment or shared anything so far this year. Next year, I've got more things planned. The review I did on that prop firm seemed to go well. So I'm going to kind of take that journey this year, uh, bring you guys along, I think, and show you guys how I'm passing these prop firm challenges, what I'm doing with the money, all that kind of stuff. It will be a lot of fun. So go to statsetrading.com, sign up for the email list there, make sure you're kept abreast to everything that's going on. Have a safe and happy New Year's and get away from the screens.